Every generation will not be confused. There is a generation that will get this thing. Say the compressed of a from that day. The creative dimension of the prophetic. There must be a performance because. Jesus, Emmanuel. Joseph did not say Jesus looks like a nice name. If he was wrong, if he imagine if Jesus' name was John, look at the confusion that would have happened to their ministries. Back to our discussion the message of unity and love. Listen to me. I truly believe with all my heart that the unity of faith is attainable. This is the reason why you see as a ministry and as a person I have profound honor for the body of Christ you will never hear me call a man of God's name to criticize him to tear him down no I may challenge wrong doctrines I have my reservations but God has given me the flexibility to navigate around the body I have preached in maybe there are few major denominations where I've not preached in severally all kinds of places have gone there and some of them they may not even think i may come because they feel ah will you come i say me i'll come hallelujah expecting perfection from the body in terms of blamelessness is a waste of time it will never happen god gave me this revelation listen to my teaching the unity of faith it is very important john said i saw seven lampstands and in the midst of the lampstand he said was one who looked like the son of man the lampstand represents the catholic church the universal church with all her imperfection christ is still in the midst of her if you look for trouble in church you will find it if you look for satan in church you will find him you will look you it, the church is a place where you find everything you are looking for because it says he that seeketh find it you are looking for wicked people in church you will find them you are looking for hypocrites in church you will find them are we together you are looking for unserious people who are not born again you will find them witches and wizards you will find them familiar spirits you will find them the holy spirit you will find him this is a church and in the midst of it jesus is still standing by that her wife like a faithful husband do you leave your wife when she's injured if you run away from your wife because of an injury are you a good husband he's a faithful husband he loves unto death he stands by his eve no matter how bruised he still stands are we together yes. we must preach unity in the body of christ this is why you see me advocating i dislike and i detest men of god taking advantage of their pulpits to tear down other people no no don't if you're a man of God here don't do it don't do it that is not your assignment don't stand to tear down another man of God's work and criticize other people no 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 you can challenge wrong doctrines you can correct what needs to correct but respect what everybody is doing because you see the trouble in the body of Christ will never end provided people keep fighting others every time you fight a man of god those who are loyal to that man of god and love the vision will respond to and so the, the the fight will be endless there are many people who have no business fighting one another is their fathers their spiritual fathers that have caused that thing because subliminally they have communicated a body language once i see you associating with this and that you're a demon you're a devil it is wrong that doctrine comes from the pit of hell it's a doctrine of demons once upon a time the disciples looked at some people and said should we call down fire and jesus looked at them this is a generation better than elijah generation elijah calls down fire jesus converts and brings people by his mercy are we together yes do not use your status your influence or your position to tear down no respect the fathers give the fathers their due honor our fathers of faith in this nation deserve our honor till the day they go to their graves 
I don't care what we see or what we do not see. Noah saw his father, I mean, um, the sons of Noah saw their father's nakedness. One of them was laughing at the nakedness because Noah was drunk. The other went behind and covered the father's nakedness. Even though the father was drunk, he woke up and knew who saw him and said, who was watching me while I was drunk? And he cursed him. He said, a servant of servants shall you be. The eyes of Eli may be dim, but Eli is still prophet. Samuel, it will take Eli for your anointing to come to manifestation. Let's be careful, especially the generation rising. Just because by reason of elevated grace, we can see some things that may need to be corrected. You've heard me say it. The people we are raising are also seeing our own mistakes. There will be a corrected version of us. And there is nothing to be proud of, to, to be ashamed about. One generation improves upon another. We saw all the mistakes of Papa Hagin and our fathers. We read some of their books and we say, wow, this man is great, but look at the limitations here. This is what they saw. Revelation is progressive. All that we are shouting and bragging today, I've told you, there is a generation God is preparing. I'm only praying that humility will keep them till they even manifest. One day they will listen to Joshua Selman's message and they will lovingly correct a few things. They'll say, wow, look at what he said. Well, it's at his level. Absolutely. It will be pride to believe we are the omega of revelation no does not it, it that is that is an insult to the ministry of the holy spirit sow a seed of honor now so that when your turn comes your sons both physical and spiritual even when they see the gaps in your understanding because you sow the seed of honor to the fathers you will also receive a harvest of honor from the sons are we together very important i preach the message of unity to the body of christ and i've said it again and again make reference to my birthday broadcast i don't know if it was last year or year before last and i thought that there are keys that help people number one is mutual honor you cannot downgrade listen this is a charge respectfully speaking every man of god that has the ears to listen to me now listen you don't tear down demean a man of god demean the work he's doing demean the ministry demean everything and then expect unity it doesn't work that way it's like slapping you matching your feet pushing you and then saying come and hug me we are one and then doing it again it does not work that way see let me tell you as a principle when i travel to regions because of what god has done and you know the grace that he has placed upon our lives at this level people get excited and sometimes i can already sense that you know these things come frankly speaking with maybe a sense of intimidation here and there and i meet men of god colleagues in ministry senior colleagues sometimes contemporaries and then those who are looking up to us and you can see sometimes this sense of unworthiness apostle joshua selman is in town i am very quick to observe it that listen i have not come to downplay and demean and rubbish what the men of god are doing it is because they are serious that we can even have a crowd to preach to i have only come to support what they are doing and you see that a lot of the pastors their hearts are open and they support they embrace when you see pastors look like they are fighting one another it's not because they are evil people it is because either the man of God always gives an impression like everybody is doing nonsense. We are the ones who know what we are doing. It's a very wrong philosophy. Or number two, Joshua Selman will come into a city and push everybody and make it look like you are not serious. No. Sometimes we are sitting and discussing with men of God and I say, okay, about this question, say something and say, ah. I should say what where you are here and i said what does that mean you know for some of you you'll be happy because it means ah be careful that's how many die if the holy ghost is there and is listening who are you not to listen <laughs> hallelujah i have sat down with people fellow men of god pastors and even my dear sons and daughters in ministry, sometimes I ask them questions and I keep quiet and I listen to them. And I listen sincerely to learn. One of the greatest transformation in this ministry came about maybe 12, 12 or 13 years ago 
when I asked everyone who were very small then that time, maybe a little, not more than three, four hundred, everybody to write his suggestion on what we can do to improve the ministry. Don't write your name so that we don't even know who you are. Be polite, be sincere, but state what can happen. I sat down and I read every one of those suggestions. I was amazed at the intelligence of the people I was leading. Can I tell you, when you become Alpha and Omega, your ministry will become a reflection of your limitation. But when you open up sincerely knowing that I'm only called by grace, it does not mean I know everything. Now people can be able to support you in love with superior intelligence. Anything I do not know something about or not enough about, sincerely, even if it is a baby that can teach me, I will humble myself and listen. How can I learn to improve myself? Run away from pride is a killer. When Jesus sat down with the little children, he was not preaching to them. He was listening to them. You would be surprised what he got from them. Are we together? Are we together? So, you are part of this vision. Understand that God has given us a message to mend some of these unnecessary broken relationships in the body of Christ that has short-circuited the program of God. And let me tell you, for every man of God who has contributed to promoting love and unity in the body of Christ, as a ministry, we honor and we salute you. May God bless you wherever you are and whoever you are, whether in Nigeria and in Africa, that you have become an active contributor. Listen. I have traveled to places where I've seen the things that men of God have done for me. I've been humbled by their humility. Some of them literally shelved their ministries and everything. This UK conference we're planning now, you cannot imagine how many people, pastors and leaders, as though they don't have churches, plunging their all. How could you dishonor people who bend over backwards that much? No. I travel to go and minister and sometimes the men of God will tell me, Apostle, this is home. Feel free. Some of them will vacate their offices and vacate their seats for me to sit down and counsel people. And the man of God who heads the church will be standing somewhere like a protocol. And I feel very uncomfortable. I say, sir, please, come and sit down. Let's do it together. And they say, no, 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 Apostle. These people traveled and they came to see you. What, what security to be able to do that? And then I would come and now downplay them. Would that be fair? And then say, let's be one. No. No. There must be mutual respect in the body of Christ. Listen, if you don't believe another man's mandate, leave him with God. But an attempt to fight another man's mandate, when he succeeds, you will bend your head in shame forever. There are many, many young people today who were mocked at, talked bad at, and now God is helping, lifting them across Nigeria, Africa, and those who said all kinds of things. Maybe they made mistakes. No. Don't call on clean what God has called clean. Are we together? Yes. I believe in people. When I travel to Zaria, or sometimes you see people from various campuses, they come here to see me after service. And some of those people come to see me and they are looking as if they are looking at some angel and I tell them, gentlemen, listen, everybody was at this level. Some of us, we were not believed that when we were at that level. There were people who even prayed that we fail. It's the mercy of God that brought us this far. So my job is to love you and I look, if there is anything to correct, you correct in love and support them. For as long as I live, I will be an active supporter of younger ministries coming. I say this and I will repeat it again. Where there is need for correction, you correct, you guide, you help, but you don't throw the baby under bad water. Some of the people God is raising will be by far better than us. Some of you are here looking at me. Don't worry. Just keep listening. Where you see that we did not do well, just pray for us. But I tell you, let God sharpen you like an arrow and you will become an improvement to what we are doing. In the name of Jesus Christ. The message of unity and love.
Thank you for watching our entire video today. If you feel you can bless someone, please join us and spread the gospel by sharing this video on your social media.